well today I figured that I would give you a bit of a review on my helmet. So this, this is, just adjust the camera a little bit, this is the LS2 Subverter Motocross Helmet. And let me just point out a few of the features. First of all, you can see that it has lots of vents. Just remove these goggles. Another thing is that the if you look, the chin guard drops down a little bit. Some helmets, they kind of go straight, and this one just drops down a bit. It also has adjustment points here on the, uh, the visor, <clears throat> or the maybe it's the, the roost guard. What's more, it's got a D-ring closure system. And this lining right here, it says pull right here on these tabs. And these are pull out tabs in case you injure your neck, have a neck injury. You can pull these tabs out and it'll allow the whole helmet to slide off your head without having to possibly re-injure or increase the injury on your neck. It also has a, a smooth plastic lining in here. It's for MIPS, a multiple impact or is it multi-directional impact protection system so that the padding will slide around in the helmet if you have a twisting or a rotating concussion or injury, I should say. It's supposed to reduce those rotational forces, reduce your injury. It's uh, DOT and ECE certified. And uh, so those are some of the basic features of this helmet. Now, uh, also, yeah, also the entire liner here is removable. You can unsnap these portions here, and then you can pull this in right there and remove that as well. A couple of things I do like about this helmet is that the ventilation does actually make a difference. This ventilation, you have some holes in the inside as well. I don't know if you can see them that well. They're not very big, but they do make a difference as far as ventilation. It's a nice wide open face area. You can easily put the goggles on. It also allows a lot of air to go in. And there's vents right here as well. The adjustability on the visor makes it so that you can lower it. I like it low so it doesn't catch the wind very much. It's a very sharp kind of skeletal visor and these scoops help keep the visor pressed down and the helmet pressed down as well. So those are some of the things I like about it. I can adjust this visor so it stays nice and tight on the helmet. Also the helmet fits very snugly and it doesn't move around very much provided you get the right size. So those are some positive aspects of this helmet. Oh, and also I like the white color that makes it so that it, it does have a variety of colors. It's one of the benefits of this helmet. It comes in quite a wide variety of colors. I picked white because uh, well, one reason is it's very, very visible, highly visible on in the, any type of weather or any type of lighting condition. I also added a few uh, reflectors on the front and back in case a vehicle comes at me, they might be able to see me, whether in the front or in the back. And I, yeah, I do like the color. Now, as far as the things I don't particularly like, uh, one of the things about the fact that this area, this chin bar drops down is that it catches, like if I've got my arms out, and I turn my head to the side, the, uh, I'll show you. You go like this, and the, the chin bar kind of hits your shoulder, and you, you gotta lift your helmet up, especially if you have shoulder pads, which I wear shoulder pads. It, my, my range of motion is like this, and that's as far as I can go. I can't really go much further. So that's one of the, the drawbacks of the way this thing drops down, is it does kind of get in the way when I'm trying to turn my head. Another thing that's uh, quite a major issue is these things pop out, but I don't recommend you pop them out on a regular basis because this black plastic chassis framing inside the liner, it began to kind of separate after about five or six times of pulling these out. 
So you got to pull them out. If you're going to wash these, you want to wash the liner, you got to pull them out very gingerly and hold on to the, the black plastic liner. Otherwise, it'll start to separate. And I have re-glued the black plastic um, chassis in here. So uh, that is a bit of an issue that I've had. It kind of separated. I think they should use better quality glue or some sort of better quality attachment system. Uh, another thing I don't like, small thing. Because of the bright color of this, uh, the, this uh, padding, it tends to get or show the dirt very, very much. And that can be a bit of an issue. Uh, it just looks uh, messy, but then again, maybe that helps remind you that you need to clean your helmet more often. But as far as the, the, the bigger drawback with this liner or this padding is that it was extremely tight. I got a double XL, this is a double XL helmet, and I normally only take an XL, but I got a size larger. LS2 seems to make their helmets a bit on the small side. But even then, it was extremely tight. These cheek pads were so tight, it squished my face. And I couldn't even close my lips, it was just like this. I couldn't even close my jaw all the way, it, comfortably. It was so incredibly tight. So, what I did is I took some, some straps right here. You can see these um, cable ties, two cable ties, and I made a little cross and I tightened down them so that it gave myself a little bit more space in the helmet. Um, maybe later I'll release them, but the cable ties seem to make it so it fits better. So it was just too tight overall. I felt ridiculously tight. <clears throat> you cannot put any sort of um, speaker system in here. It, does, it doesn't seem to be set up from having speakers like Pack Talk or, or anything else like that. But maybe, you know, should you really be listening to music while you're doing off-road? I don't know. But you, if you want to put speakers in here, you can't. And as far as the holes, as you'll notice, these holes are only about as wide as a pencil. They look really big over here. And you go, oh, it's about like an inch and a half square. No, they're, they're the size of a pencil. So I wish that LS2 had designed it to have these openings just to be a little bit bigger than they are. It's, it's, it works, but I think it could have worked a lot better. Any other drawbacks? Oh, yes. This is a cosmetic drawback. When I got the helmet, it was nice and white, but the plastic on the visor is a soft plastic, and this is a hard plastic. So they're different compounds, and they fade in the sun at different rates, I suppose. They react to the sun differently. And what this means is that this is kind of a yellow. It's not really a white anymore. It's a white on the inside, but on the, on the sun side, it's not really white anymore. And you can see it, you know, from a short distance, you can see that it is yellow and white, not white and white. And this happened after maybe about a, a dozen hours or more of riding. So I wish that there was some way that they could have kept them to have the same color. That's not really noticeable from far away. And I've seen myself in pictures and it, the whole helmet looks white, to be honest, at, at a further distance. But just when you look at it up close, you notice, ah, oh, these are two slightly different shades of color. And uh, this, just a small aesthetic thing that I don't like about this helmet. All right, so I paid about $160 for this helmet. I think it could be about $200 now. Uh, it's, it's about two and a half kilos, so it's not super light. It's about a standard weight for a helmet. Uh, if you get a, a more expensive helmet, like a $400 dirt bike helmet, you're probably going to get something that has maybe better ventilation or is lighter, things like that. But as far as a $160 to $200 helmet, would I recommend the LS2 Subverter, despite the little detractions that I have noticed? And I would say yes. Why? Because I have fallen a few times in it, and it does to protect my head quite well. Nothing too serious, but enough that I needed to have the helmet on my head. And the ventilation, although it's not really large, it does make a difference. And I like the fact that it's in a nice white color, and I can remove the liner, and I can just hose this entire helmet out. That's one of the good things. You can just take it, spray it down with a hose, and then put it outside, let's say, in the breeze, and it'll dry within about a day. So that's really cool. It's very versatile, it's very washable, it's very tough, and uh, it fits on my head snugly, and the, uh, the, the roost guard up here, the visor, doesn't catch the wind and flop around. It, it keeps kind of nice and tight. So overall, I do like the helmet, and I think it was worth the money that I paid for it, and I think I would recommend it in general. I mean, obviously, if you find something that's like maybe a Shoei or an Arai or one of those higher quality brands, 
that is also going to be a lot more expensive, I would say by all means go for it. But if you're looking at a, yeah, roughly $200 or maybe less helmet that is a DOT and ECE certified, this one, uh, put this one on, on your list, on, on your short list. I, I do recommend it. And uh, you know, the variety of colors and color combinations is also quite nice as well. So I hope this is helpful for you. This is after using this helmet pro probably about 40 or 50 rides. I've used this for almost two years, about a year and eight months. So this is a long-term review. And uh, so make your decision kind of based on that. This isn't just an unboxing where I, I whipped the helmet out and went, oh, this feels great. Oh, I'll give it a you know, five-star rating. I've actually used this quite a lot in all kinds of weather and in all kinds of conditions. Uh, so, and I've used it in competition as well. So this is my fairly well-informed long-term review. Take it as you will. Thank you, and for all other riding videos, gear reviews, and videos about motocross and enduro, please check out my channel, Riding Nom. Please subscribe. Your comments and your thumbs up and your subscriptions are very much appreciated.